internet friends. Welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Hey, Internet Brand, Magic Brad, Synergy Cafe, and the Synergy Collaborative, and I've got a new friend online. He's in the same time zone as me for a change. I've been working the East Coast and the West Coast, and now we got somebody from the Central Time Zone, and he's just south of me, down in Texas. Are you there, Damien? I am, Brad, right here at the heart of Texas in Austin. Is it Damien? Yes. Because my bro, my sister, uh, my sister, and <laughs> my wife's brother, his name is Damon. So sometimes. Close. <laughs> It can get confused. And what's the last name? Lupo. Just L-U-P-O, Lupo. Easy breezy. We can remember that. So you live down in Austin, Texas. That's where my niece is from. Yep, unique little spot here right in the heart of, of Texas. Unlike anything else in Texas, and people in Austin will yeah. fight to let you know that they are different and not like anything <laughs> in Dallas or Houston or anything. I did an interview with somebody who was down there, and she said, I, I, I told her that she was like a, like a Hollywood type of girl, and she said no, because she's a gun-toting Texan, but she lives in Austin. <laughs> that's unusual, because there's, there's a lot of California, a lot of Hollywood that's moving out here to Austin. So. Yeah, well, she was anti-California and wanted to let me know that she uh, carried a gun and wore boots. <laughs> yeah, we have that here. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you lived in Austin? I've been here for about six years, so it was, it's, uh, I, I was in Phoenix before this for about 10, and then before that, I grew up in Alaska, so three big places, really, Alaska, uh, wow. Arizona, and then and then here with a few stops in Connecticut and Alabama, but been here for a while. That was a shock from Alaska to Arizona, I take it. it the crazy part is, I left Alaska, I left you know, when I was working in Prudhoe Bay, which is the Arctic Circle where they, they pump oil. And it was January, so I left when it was 80 below zero, and I went down to Phoenix a couple days later, and it was 70 degrees. So 150 degrees in two days. <laughs> I was in shock. Hey, hey, hey. That'll, yeah. that'll wake you up. <laughs> yeah, or put you into a coma. <laughs> so you're down there, and the, up up there in the oil fields, and now you're down here in Austin. What are you doing for a occupation these days? That's that's a kind of like, what are you do? Or Before I ask that, are you married and you got kids and all that kind of stuff down there? No, but right now I'm married to, to my mission. So okay. <laughs> eventually it'll mesh with, uh, with the family, but right now it's, it, I'm all in on, on what I'm doing. Well, that segues into what is it that you're doing? What is your mission? I am literally disrupting Wall Street and empowering Main Street, getting people off the Wall, the Wall Street roller coaster, helping them take control of their money so that they're not subject to the Wall Street shenanigans and, and all the fees, and then really helping them with the confidence to figure out what to do with their money so that they can actually be responsible for it and design a life instead of having a life by default with their money. Okay, I kind of got that out of your 10x thing that I saw. I think I saw you on LinkedIn and stuff. And that's really cool because I interviewed another guy earlier on this. And uh, me and uh, my friend Ron, we talk a lot about this kind of thing too, that uh, times have changed and the whole thing of you know investing your money with a financial advisor. Like, did you read that book, Tony Robbins, uh, Money Master the Game? I did. That's got some interesting stuff in it. That kind of Makes you think different, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff in there. There's there's a there's a lot of a lot of interesting insights from from different people. I, I think the thing that that is a, a bit of a shift away from that is is just the real total responsibility. I, I just don't agree with people turning their stuff over to somebody and, and hoping and praying, and that's their strategy. I think smoking hopium is a real dangerous way to to plan your financial future. So I'm in favor of total responsibility and total control of the money. Well, if you think about that kind of thing, and I'm not trying to diss financial planners and all that kind of stuff, but um, if if you're going to do something like that, why don't you match me? I'll put a yeah. dollar in, you put a dollar in, let's both play this game together. Don't just tell me that I'm going to win, because the reality is, is they're kind of gambling with your money. It's kind of like going to Vegas, here's 100 bucks, put it on the slot machines. Well, that's you didn't a, win anything. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. It's I mean, it really is gambling. The, the thing that's interesting is that with the financial advisors, I think there's a lot of great people that do financial advisor work, but really let's let's be honest about what a financial advisor is. They're, they're a salesperson. They get paid to, to move money around. And whether you make money or you lose money, financial advisors get their commission, they get their, their fees. 
and they don't have any risk. There's no downside if they make massive mistakes. Right. You take all the risk, and and they get the return. Uh, you might or you may or may not get the return. So I, that's why I don't like the model. I don't think it's it's set up for you to win. I think it's set up for the for the Wall Street brokers to win. Well, it makes sense if you got a business. You're in the business to make money. That's what business is. Sure. So why wouldn't they hedge their bet like that? But you're what you're doing is trying to teach people to wake up to this kind of concept, kind of like um. Like the Robert Kiyosaki thing. You ever play his game Cash Flow? I did. I actually used to play Cash Flow in Phoenix with one of the guys that designed it that was uh, there oh, wow. at a kitchen table. Uh, his name is Rolf. And he they called him Spock because he was smarter than everybody collectively in the room. And, <laughs> and so I used to play that game in the beginning days when I was doing real estate investing. I, I used to play the Cash Flow game at night. And then during the day, I'd go buy rental properties and things and come back and, and play the game. And, and it, so it was my life, morning, noon, and night. I was in the middle of that game. Well, it's just an interesting mindset because most people have been brought up to think that you're supposed to buy a house and it's going to increase in value and all that stuff. And you could, you know, you, you buy things, you're, you're a consumer. But when I played that game, the first card that I drew was I just, hey, guess what? You just bought a boat. And I thought, I really don't want this boat. It was a surprise to me that I got this big giant boat now and I don't want to have this big boat. What am I going to do with it? I used to love playing that game and seeing people that got the boat. And then what was funny is typically they had just purchased something or they just bought some doodad or some vacation. And so the, the game really was a reflection of right. life. And you learn so much about each other and about yourself by playing the game. Because the game, like money and like math, doesn't really lie. It's just something about how that game is created, the energy around it. It's, it's pretty powerful. I love playing that game still. Exactly. So... Um, shifting a little bit, then how do you do your work? Um, when you, cause you, obviously you help people and kind of awaken them to this. Is this, is that what, is that what you do? Do you do this, uh, like there on site? Do you have an office or you got a kind of an office there? Yeah. yeah. The, the work that we do, so basically it's broken into two things. There's, there's the empowerment piece and then there's the, uh, the education piece. And maybe there's a, even a third and really the core, the third piece is the 10 X thinking. It's the abundant thinking. The, the empowerment piece is the self-responsibility. And that's the piece that that's our core focus where we'll take somebody and give them a vehicle and it, it's called the EQRP where we shift their money and put it in their hands. So if they have a 401k or an IRA, that's usually where most people's retirement money is sitting and it's stuck and they don't realize it's in Wall Street jail. So we give them, we, we create a tool called the EQRP and some people have heard of things like self-directed IRAs and, and self-directed 401ks. This is kind of similar, except it's 10 times better. So. Mm -hmm. If you have something similar, you generally want to go with the thing that's 10 times better. And then once they have that, we educate them on all these different things that they can do, like investing in precious metals or real estate. And we don't just teach academically, but we're teaching from a place of, of actually have been, been in the, trench, the trenches. So we have a centurion approach, meaning that everything that we teach, there's at least 100 years of, of real world experience, not just master degrees or, or things like that, but people that have gone out and made millions of dollars in these things that are teaching from the actual experience and it, it, it lends a, a different level of credibility. It's not just an idea or a theory. And do you help people with mindset kind of stuff? Yeah, that's, that's usually the, the hardest thing for people to shift. Yeah. And it's the one thing once that happens, once the psychology shifts and the emotional intelligence starts to shift, really that's building this muscle of, of believing in themselves because we've had plenty of people that have come in with million to five million dollars and they're scared to death and they won't do anything. They just feel like they're too stupid or or they're going to make a mistake. And so they end up hesitating and then they're just afraid they're going to run out of money, which is really the big problem with saving money up. And at 60 years old, we think, hey, we're good. We've got millions of dollars. The truth is you're not going to be good. You're going to be sitting there going, I hope I don't lose it because I don't have another 40 years to build it up. Right, exactly. So um, on the mindset, I got a quick little story I'll share with you that uh, that is, I guess, tie in and relevant that a lot of people don't they're in this transaction mentality and they're in this job mentality and they're stuck in this dollar per hour box and that's kind of where they they just bounce through they're stuck in that that that, that thinking style well um out of high school i did some printed circuit board work and stuff and there was a printed circuit board that would slide in the computer and you could it would go in both ways one way it would work fine the other way it would blow up the computer so all I did when I was there was I changed a part number on a screw so it was a little bit longer. It was a 03 to an 04. Now the screw is a little bit longer, so now you couldn't put it in this way. You had to turn it around. It goes in that way. So that took me literally the time to change the, the, the 3 to a 4 seconds, but just think, the thinking of it, 
is what saved a lot of money. So how valuable is that? It's and, very and it's, valuable. It's everything. It's, yeah. it's awesome. So it's that kind of thinking. If a person can shift that, if they were to maybe buy your book or buy your program or things like that, that might just change something. Just a couple co uh, uh, places in the brain that all of a sudden they think a little bit different. It could be worth millions of dollars, right? No, it's, it's, it's easily worth millions of dollars. And the thing that's worth even more than that is, is the, the calm. It's the switch from the anxiety of being on this roller coaster that you don't have any control over. I mean, if you have money on the Wall Street roller coaster, you don't have any control and you're just hoping it's not going to blow up on your way there or when you need it. So the bigger thing, it's not so much that there's this exponential return, which you have the option of creating. It's that you've got the ability to go to sleep at night and not worry about waking up and having the markets crash and, and you being subject to it. You don't worry about that anymore. I mean, that what is that worth? That's to me, that's priceless. And for most people, they would trade everything to be in that space. Well, I've I've got I used to produce uh, expos and things like that, so I've been putting a lot of money into a SEP, and in that I was doing a Vanguard, which is in REITs. Now, granted, it's a little bit gambling, but I think real estate's a pretty solid thing as opposed to technology because we're always going to need a roof over our head. So it's worked really good for me because real estate is fairly stable, whether it be residential, commercial, and this uh, the the Vanguard REITs are. Uh, shopping centers and and apartment complexes and storage lockers and resort properties and retirement homes and so it's it's pretty diversified in and of itself so i feel pretty pretty good with it but it's still that that kind of thing isn't it i'm putting the, giving the money to vanguard and they're kind of doing what they can do with it yeah it's it's not that necessarily that any particular fund is good or bad it's just that inside that system there's always going to be fees that are taken out which choose a way to return in right. fact john bogle the founder of vanguard uh, is on our website on totalcontrolfinancial.com and he he talks about this in, in his you can find him on youtube as well where 80 percent of the returns that you'll make over your lifetime or that you should make end up going to the wall street brokerage houses and most people don't realize that it's that lopsided so even if you have something good, even in your case with the REIT, that's fantastic. I mean, I, I love real estate. And so it may not be bad. The problem, again, is that you're just getting hammered and you don't even realize it oftentimes because it's not disclosed. And, and that's the thing about owning real estate yourself, being in control. You actually get to see the numbers. There's nobody stealing your money. I mean, unless you go let them, but you're yeah. really in charge. So it's, it's up to you to, to be a good steward of your money and to, and to watch it and not disconnect from it. Well, I did some uh, purchases of uh, some stuff that there was a 3%, the bank charged a 3% charge because it was out of the country. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, 3% is no big deal. But then when I saw the charge, because it was a significant amount of money, it was $350. It was, <laughs> it was fairly, uh, it was a big 3%. But when you see it as a percentage, it feels like, ah, that's no big deal, just 3%. But when you got but some bigger numbers, it's a different deal. It's, it's funny you mention that because a lot of the credit cards now, they used to have these 0% transfers. People could get they that thought free money. I get 18 months of 0% of or whatever it was. They, the credit card companies have pretty much shifted to where it's 3 4 or 5% as a fee just to get the money, and then you get the 0%. And what's what's funny is that they're essentially getting that money at zero or one or two percent. So they're making massive money on just on that spread. And people don't realize like you, you're three hundred and fifty bucks, three, four or five percent when you take out ten, twenty thousand dollars is a chunk. It's not free money. And so we just have to be more <laughs> conscious to what's really happening. Yeah, it's a, it can be elusive. Very so, elusive. <laughs> so I want to ask you how to get a hold of you and all that kind of stuff. And then I'm going to ask my favorite question. So how, do, how does, if someone wants to get a hold of you, do you have like a, like a free consultation or something? Or do they, just, they call you up, email you? What's the method of getting a hold of you? Yeah, the best way to go is, is to go to totalcontrolfinancial.com and then click at the top right. There's a, a, a link for getting a copy of, of the EQRP book. And once they get that, they're going to end up receiving emails and there's going to be phone numbers and there's going to be ways to reach out, set an appointment and, and have a free consultation. So if that, if getting off the roller coaster is, is interesting and being in control, then that's a perfect way to start and really just getting educated. Once you see this stuff, it's hard to not see it again. Like you know, once you've seen the, the train wreck, you go, okay, I ha I've seen it. And once you get the information, you really have to decide what you're going to do. You've taken the, the right pill, the red pill, the blue pill. Um, <laughs> now you get to choose what you're going to do. The Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> so it's TotalControlFinancial.com. Yes, that's right. That's a good name. It's Total Control. I like that. Good. So here's my favorite question, and that's the okay. big question of 
the big why question. Why is it you're doing this? Why haven't you like, why aren't you like an accountant or a, a yoga instructor or being down in Austin? Why haven't you opened up a head shop or something? <laughs> well, I do do a lot of yoga, and uh, I, te- I actually formed my own martial art called Yokido, which is oh, really? my keto and yoga. So I've, I've got I'm in that world. The reason that I'm doing the work that I'm doing in this financial space, and I, I've had lots of things I've done with insurance and real estate, they were all limited in terms of, of the impact I was having on people. And something really clicked about three years ago, and it was uh, it was actually la- three years ago last month when I was up in Alaska. Uh, my, my father had just been diagnosed with stage four cancer and, and had a matter of weeks. And so I flew up and, and was visiting with him and sitting there at a coffee shop. It was actually the last, the last conversation we ever had. And he looked at me and he said, there were just so many things that I wanted to do. And I died a little bit right then. I, it broke my heart because I realized I was, I was watching and feeling regret. And there was regret there because he didn't feel like he had the resources. He had lived playing on defense most of his life. And he never really went out and did things that he really wanted to do Mm -hmm. limited by financial beliefs. And I went, there's gotta be a better way so that people don't have to live like this. And I can do something on a large scale. So starting this company made sense. It wasn't good enough just to share this with one or two people. I decided it was important enough to launch a, a company and a movement to share with people an idea that they could be in control and they could have a life by design and not go into their last months and weeks and say, gosh, I wish I'd done things. Instead, they could say, damn, that was amazing. And that was spectacular. And I have no regrets. Well, that's uh, good to hear. Um, again, I say this almost almost all the interviews I do, that uh, people are there, their, their big why is to help other people. So you're on track with that. But um, I like, like this idea. You're also in the martial arts. I've got a background in martial arts also. So who knows? Down the road, maybe we'll do another interview more focused on wellness and spirituality and things of that sort. And seeing you're from Austin, I don't know if you're open to it, but maybe I'll come down there and we'll do some kind of like mastermind event or something about shifting your money and a keto, a keto it's all, it's for the, the dollar. Stuff. Together, it's all it is. It is. It's very, very relevant. That's the the areas that we deal in with the Synergy Collaborative. It's lifestyle design of career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness, and they do all commingle with each other and harmonize into Absolutely. a yin yang kind of thing. So I appreciate you taking the time today. And if you want, we'll get on. Uh, you can we can chat a little bit later. But I'm going to sign this one off and put it in the can, as they say, and then beam it up to the internet so people can learn. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So thanks again, Damien. Appreciate you taking the time. Thanks, Brad.